I call Claire Curran. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Um, and I certainly agree with the previous uh, speaker on one point, and that is that we certainly uh, can't generate uh, economic development uh, by buying and selling to ourselves, and that therefore export uh, exports, our export and our developing our own industries becomes such uh, an important part of our, and is an important part of our strategy. Unfortunately, under this government, exports, the ratio of exports to GDP has fallen to its lowest since 1997 under this government. Um, they've failed to meet their own target. They're going backwards and 28 per cent um, uh, exports, just 28 per cent of GDP on an actual basis, down from 32 per cent when they came into office. And which is a, um, I suppose, a framing of one of the problems that we've got in this country right now, um, and Labor is speaking in support of this bill because, on balance, it seems uh, it, it does meet um, the tests uh, that uh, an agreement, a free trade agreement, need to meet. It's not perfect, and I will be um, mentioning some of the problems that we do have with it. And one of the problems is is that is that the negotiating skills of a, a, uh, free trade agreements under this government are, are, are certainly not to the high standard of, of the negotiating skills of the free trade agreement under the previous Labour government, to which the Chinese free trade agreement is, is the case in point. And, um, well, Mr. Mr. Chair, Mr. Speaker, I, I rest my point um, that there is clearly a difference, and the difference is the government. The difference is who's in government. And um, um, so with regards to um, our exports, uh, Mr. Mr Speaker, we certainly have work to do. And we have work to do in if we are going to be taking advantage of these agreements in actually ensuring that we're investing in our industries and making sure that there are exports to sell. Um, and I'll be talking a bit more about that in a minute. But um, I just want to make a few points, um, uh, Mr Speaker, that Mr Phil Goff made, my colleague Phil Goff, who was responsible for the negotiation of the China, China Free Trade Agreement under the previous Labour government, of which, on, on which the, um, the current Prime Minister waxes lyrical, uh, made the point in his uh, contribution in the committee stage that the, the tariffs um, that apply to Korea are low, um, and, that, and, and, and he used the examples of washing machines and car tyres, and around 5% was the figure that he mentioned. And he said that the removal of that won't make a huge impact on industry in New Zealand, and, that, and that's true. But he also described this agreement as and he would know as not meeting the definition of being high quality and comprehensive. And that this wasn't just his words, he was quoting from uh, Russell McVeigh, an expert, has said that this agreement will not achieve the results um, that, that are similar to that of China. And I, can't, I can see that the government has run out of steam and can't run, raise an argument around that one. The loser being particularly milk powder, where the tariffs remain particularly high. I also want to reference uh, the comments made uh, it, also in the committee stage by my other colleague sitting next to me, Jenny Salisa. Who, um, who, as, who referenced her own electorate of Manukau East, and it was quite a powerful statement that she made around um, in Manukau East in South Auckland, which is at the epicentre of a housing crisis of monumental proportions, where thousands of young New Zealanders and low, low to middle income groups are, are basically tenants in their country. Mr. Mr Speaker, this is relevant to the debate, absolutely relevant. And and it's relevant to the debate because it, it goes to one of the problems that Labor has with this bill, which, with, um, which is, um, which is w the, the flaw um, around the loss of sovereignty um, and our concern around the controls on the purchase of New Zealand land by overseas buyers, which 
um, which we, we believe um, is, a, is, is, is concerning and that we, where, um, where the, this agreement may, and that may have the impact that this agreement may have on the future of New Zealand governments to establish co controls on the purchase of land, uh, of New Zealand residential land by overseas buyers and on its ability to bring in a stamp duty on purchases of land by overseas buyers. Now, Mr Speaker, this is important and it is relevant and it does go to, um, to uh, comments made by uh, the Minister at the beginning of this third reading about around future future um, discussions had in this House around free trade agreements and the import of those discussions because this is the only time that the Labour Party um, and that the opposition parties get to debate the impact of a free trade agreement is when we get to have an actual piece of legislation in the House before us. And uh, Mr Grosser himself referenced this and said that there is another agreement which is being negotiated at the moment, and of course we all know that that's the TPPA, which is the Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement, which if there is legislation that comes to the House, that this is, is where uh, the opposition parties the only opportunity that they have to A, have a vote, and B, have an opportunity to have a debate. Well, I would say to Mr Grosser that what would be useful is if he could actually give an indication to the Parliament and, um, and to the people of New Zealand as to what kinds of legislation that's going to be, how many pieces of legislation that will be, and when New Zealand might get the opportunity to learn what the topics are, um, and, and because there has been so much secrecy around this. Well, Mr Speaker, this does go to, news, to the bottom lines that the New Zealand Labour Party have um, in, in its, uh, its consideration of free trade agreements and what the importance of free uh, look, trade agreements. Look, um, we're on a third reading of a bill, and um, TP, the uh, Trans-Pacific Partnership, is not part of it. It can be referenced. But look, there's a number of speakers' rulings, and let me refer you to, to uh, speakers' rulings 137.1. On a third reading of a bill, a, mem a member cannot discuss any matter not included in the clauses of the bill. So I just ask the member in the time providing to actually focus on uh, what a third reading's about. Uh, Claire Curran. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Well, Mr Speaker, um, given that the Minister himself did reference um, okay. the future agreements... I don't, you, I don't want you to comment on the ruling I've just given. I said you could reference it, and you have. So now just focus on the last couple of minutes on the content of, of the third reading. So, Claire Curran. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Um, well, in regards to our concerns around the, uh, the controls on the purchase of New Zealand land, Labor has said quite um, openly that we believe that there should be a that this part of the agreement were, was botched, and that a side letter should be considered for the New Zealand Free Trade Agreement with the Republic of Korea to clarify the effects of those provisions in the Free Trade Agreement. And that is very relevant to this debate. Um, we, um, we accept on balance that this Free Trade Agreement does substantially reduce the tariffs faced by New Zealand exporters. We um, accept the genuinely held concerns amongst submitters, which included the New Zealand Medical Association, the Council of Trade Unions and academics around the um, loss of sovereignty and, uh, and around the concerns about investment rules. Um, we and investment state dispute settlement provisions, we absolutely accept that there are concerns around that and we know that there are future trade agreements where those issues are, will become relevant. Our support for this bill, for this trade agreement, um, does not uh, uh, mean that there will be support for future 
agreements if they do not meet the bottom lines of the Labour Party, which are important and which include the protection of Pharmac, that corporations cannot successfully sue the government for regulation in the public interest. New Zealand maintains its right to restrict sales of farmland and housing to non-resident foreign buyers. The Treaty of Waitangi must be upheld and that meaningful gains must be made for our farmers and tariff reductions in market access. So far, the signs don't look that great. Uh, Paul Foster-Bell. In commending the tariff uh, 